Hello, and welcome to the Stories of Woe. I am Thessalmere, your host for this fine night, evening, morning. We are going to begin with the story called, We Used to Have Six Dalmatians. Hello, my name is Shelley, and I was 14 at the time when this oddity occurred. There are a few details I would like to get out of the way, so bear with me. First of all, I live near a small neighborhood that is poorly lit at night. There is the bus stop, a few more blocks up is my strange neighbor's house, and several more blocks up was my neighborhood, which is greatly lit at night. There is a forest that is surrounding my strange neighbor's house, called the Cursed Forest. I know, it's not very original, but trust me when I say that you're not going to like it. Alright, so, I'm going to start off with a story that my mom had told me that following night. She said that when we first moved into our home, I had been just a baby. They had two dogs, Orion and Dottie. As the days went on, my mom had noticed that Dottie had been behaving differently. It turned out she was going to have puppies of her own, of which she had four of them. As the months had gone by, I was a year old and I was making a mess in my high chair in the kitchen and all of the puppies were playing outside. It was lunchtime and mom decided that she wanted to feed the puppies too. But when she went out, two of them had vanished. The other puppies were playing with each other like they hadn't even noticed, completely unaware that their siblings had gone missing. They searched everywhere for them, thinking that somehow they had squeezed out of the fence. But sadly, they couldn't find them. So they called the police, thinking that possibly somebody had came in and snatched them. After all, they were Dalmatians, and they're worth a pretty penny. They were never heard or seen from again. A month had passed, and that day my parents had forgotten to walk the dogs as they gotten busy during the day. My mom decided to take Dottie and Orion out for a midnight run, but only Dottie was interested in going for a walk, while Orion just wanted to stay in the house. She thought that was odd, since they're really spry and active dogs. Nonetheless, she took Dottie outside. She had followed the long road down toward the bus stop. It is the longest road, and it's perfect for exercise, since it's on a slight slope. Dottie was a perfectly well-behaved dog. She didn't need to wear a leash. She walked by my mom's side without even leaving it, no matter what was around her. Following the dark path back home, my mom had said that she had heard some puppies crying, and it was coming from the forest. Those cries had stopped Dottie dead in her tracks. My mom had said that those cries were the most horrific sounds she had ever heard. Almost as if the dogs were not even alive, but somehow still making noise, if that makes sense. Dottie started walking towards the forest. My mom did try to stop her and keep her by her side, but she managed to get away. Dottie had ran up close to the forest edge. Her head was lowered cautiously towards the forest listening to the puppy cries, her motherly instincts just kicking in. Dottie looked back towards my mom, who had been frozen on the grass close to the sidewalk. She still called for Dottie to come to her side, but she just didn't listen. She just looked at her, she said, with those sad eyes, like as if she knew she was never going to see her again. Dottie turned and walked towards the forest, and as soon as she stepped foot into the forest, the puppy cries ended. It's like she never even existed, she said. There was no more cries. There was nothing except silence. You couldn't even hear Dottie breathing or moving or rustling, nothing. She just disappeared, just like her puppies did. My mom said that she couldn't even walk close to those woods. The fear that she had felt was paralyzing. She said that she knew that she would never get to see her precious dog ever again, and she somehow knew that the forest did have something to do with the puppy's disappearances. She said that maybe someone had taken them to be a sacrifice for the forest, 
She honestly didn't know, but she really missed her dog. Not long after that, my mom asked around her job, what was in that forest? They all said that they didn't know, but it took pets and animals in general. That even vet stores and pet shops were out of business because of it. And that's the reason why the town is so quiet, she had said. That's the reason why you haven't heard any animals or wildlife within the town. So that was the story that my mom had told me. Now to the real reason why I brought this up. Me and my strange neighbor Blaze had been the only two in detention at school under unrelated reasons, but the two of us were stuck together. As you guys may recall, his house is set within the cursed forest. And as to why I call him strange is, well, he likes to quote-unquote prank people in unnatural ways. People are super scared of him, and I was too. I just chose not to show it, but I'm afraid that's a story for another time. So, Blaze has long wavy black hair, pale skin, and the blackest set of eyes I had ever seen. He is tall and lean and never has anything nice to say. And just so you guys know, he is in fact the bully at my school. He also reminded me of Patrick from the 2017's It. He has the same kind of hair, really similar body build, you get the idea. His personality is just creepy. Anyway, I had told my parents that I was caught up late at school because I got detention. They understood and let me know that they also were going to be running late as they'll be working hard at the hospital and that they might not be able to come and pick me up from school. When we were done, the janitor had helped us out of the school grounds. And since my parents couldn't pick me up, Blaze and I walked together since we shared the same stretch of road to get to our houses, which was fine on most days, but at night, that happened so rarely for me. He was quiet, but that was pretty normal since we didn't really know each other. For a long while in my childhood, as we grew up together, Blaze did have an tendency to wait for me and we'd walk to the bus stop together. He never seemed to bother me. I just often hoped that he wouldn't try anything, and I often found myself thinking about all the places I could run to and hide from. You know, just in case he decided to do one of his pranks. And especially now, now that it is dark. But thankfully, he didn't. We made it all the way back to the poorly lit, dark street. I couldn't wait to reach my neighborhood where it was better lit. I just think it's really creepy out here. To my immediate left, there was absolutely nothing but open plains. I think at some point this whole place was supposed to become a residential area, but they never finished it for some reason. It might have had something to do with it being on a slight slope and maybe they built my neighborhood because the area on top was already flat. That was my guess, anyway. Despite that, I found myself thinking about all the places I can run and hide to again. Farther up to the left, there is an old park close by. I thought, maybe I can hide in its old slides, or those old little hippo igloo things. It would have been a tight squeeze, but it might have been worth it especially if you're possibly going to be murdered. Then my brain started to wander. I thought about the forest. There's plenty of places to hide there. Thick shrubbery, plenty of logs, plenty of tall trees to climb up into. I could easily lose somebody in there. Then we reached the only light source for the next several blocks. This single light source is the only pole lighting up Blaze's gravel driveway. And for the next eight or so blocks till I reach my neighborhood is pitch black and trees that follow me all the way up on the far right of me. When we finally reached his driveway, he shoved past me. 
I stood there in the light, aghast at his rudeness. He could have walked past me just fine, but no, he had to shove me. I didn't stick around for too long, though. All I wanted was to go home. I stood there for about three whole seconds before I started moving again. And that's when I heard it. Puppy cries coming from the forest. I walked along the side of the sidewalk, thinking maybe the puppy got stuck in a hole or something. It had sounded so pathetic. I sort of walked into Blaze's property to get to the tree line. It took me three whole minutes to get there. I thought nothing of it, really. All I wanted to see what all the fuss was about. As I drew closer, I realized something. It sounded at first like a puppy, and it still sort of did, but there was just something totally off about it. I took a nice long look into that forest, and to my horror, I finally seen it. I saw a person crouch down into the bushes of the forest. I saw long wavy black hair, pale skin, and the blackest eyes I had ever seen. It was Blaze. I held my breath in horror as I saw something shiny in his hands. It was a knife. He had an impossibly wide smile, and his eyes were as wide as could be. I thought, how could he have beaten me here? To this spot? It was impossible. I had seen him walk into his house. What took me three minutes to get here to the tree line took him, what, two seconds to run there? It was impossible. I had just seen him leave when I heard the puppies cry. Had I become confused somehow? Was I somehow walking with Blaze's dad? Impossible. There was no way. It... it was him. I was sure of it. He never moved. Even though I was standing there for quite a minute, I took my first breath in what felt like forever, and then I said to him, Oh, it's just you, Blaze. I thought I had heard a puppy crying, but it seems it's just you. I understand now that you're teasing me. Well, good night. And with that, I just left. I turned my back on him, even though everything in my body was telling me to never turn my back on him. I did it anyway, to show him that I wasn't afraid. That's what I've done my whole life with him. I just would keep my heart calm, keep my voice calm, and I just show no fear. That's how I survived him all these years. It kept him away. I just thought because of the lack of reaction that he would just get bored of me and leave me alone. And it seemed to have worked. And this time around, it did no different. Although, I did dread his footfalls coming after me up that hill. But I made it to the sidewalk, back under the light again, and followed the road. I did not run. I just walked. I didn't want him to get any idea that he scared me because I don't want him to come at me and try it again. I walked that road the whole way home, in the dark, next to the tree lines. I feared the fact that he might be there. I feared that he would come after me, but he didn't. Even though if he really wanted to come after me, I knew I wouldn't stand a chance. He was the fastest running boy at our school. Coach wanted him to go professional, even. He was that fast. I was not fast at all, and he could have easily caught me. Even though I could have been pumped up on adrenaline, there's just no way I would have been able to outrun him. But thankfully, I never heard him move, and for whatever reason, he never seemed to have left that spot. I didn't hear any crunching of leaves, no snapping of twigs like if he's been following me the whole way there, waiting for me to run. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. He just stayed there for whatever reason.
but I was glad that he did. I made it home. I cooked dinner and I waited for my parents to come home. My mom did come back and I told her how I had heard puppies cries in the forest and that's when she told me about how we used to have six Dalmatians. I never knew that the forest was cursed and I never told anybody about what I had seen. I know that most would have but this is what Blaze did. It wasn't anything new. He loved scaring people. And even to this day, I'm not even sure if he actually wanted to kill me that night or not. Or if it's one of his so-called pranks and was hoping to get some kind of reaction out of me. Something more than just a placid, oh, it's you. I honestly don't know. The one thing I don't understand is, if the forest had been cursed for years and years, and maybe even before the town was even built, and animals had been disappearing this whole time, but I want to know is how did he know about the puppy? He would have been three years old when I moved into the new house. Did his family have something to do with our missing puppies? Or was it all just a coincidence? And he just knew the rumors about his forest being cursed. And he just chose to whimper like a puppy to scare me just because it was an easy call. I don't know. All I know is I'm just glad to still be alive. And that's the end of this woe. I hope you enjoyed the tale. So, what do you think of her strange neighbor? Is he a monster or a misunderstood prankster? Nonetheless, this is the end of our story. Have a good night, evening, morning. <laughs>